Hello everyone, this is Nobody Knows and today we are doing an introductory video to complex numbers and it's going to be very simple so you don't need to know that much in order to understand complex numbers. The reason I'm doing this is because Mammal, in the next meet, which is at the time this video is recording, in December 2015, in the next meet there's going to be a complex numbers round and there are a lot of people on my math team that haven't learned complex numbers yet. So I'm making a video to teach them what complex numbers are. So what's a complex number? A complex number is a number that has to do with i. In your regular algebra classes, you have like variables, like 3x plus 2 equals 5. If you solve that equation, you get x equals 1. So x is a variable. i is not a variable. i is a letter, but it's a number. i is a number. i is not a variable. So why is i a letter if it's a number? Well, you maybe you'll remember pi. Pi is a number, but it's also like written as a Greek letter, or pi, pi. So, pi is a decimal, 3.149265, and then it keeps going. Because it keeps going for infinity, people just use pi instead of writing infinite number of decimal digits, because they can't do that. I is different, though. I is not a decimal at all. It doesn't have, like, some 1.7256 and keep going. It doesn't go on like that as a decimal. It's not like in, it's not like pi, where it's just, like, an infinite decimal. I is not a, a decimal at all. I is just I. That's it. It's just I. It's not... A decimal. It's just I. That's it. Okay. And it's a number. It's not a variable. So, what is I? Why can't it be written like a regular number? I is the square root of negative 1, which means I times I, or I squared, is negative 1. So, how is that possible? Like, if you multiply any number by itself, you get a positive number. Like, if we look at these examples, 3 times 3, 0 times 0, negative 3 times 3, those are all positive or they're 0, because 0 times 0. So they're either positive or 0. You can't get a negative number, because if you multiply a negative number by itself, you get a positive number, because the negatives cancel out. If you multiply a positive number by itself, you obviously get a positive number. So you can't get a negative number by squaring a regular number. So what is I? What kind of number is this? So, all of the numbers you've probably worked with up to this point have been like 0, 1, 2, 3, 3.2, 125 over 126, pi, uh, 22.2, square root of 2, all of those numbers. Those are all called real numbers. They're real numbers. They're on like this real number line, uh, which you might have seen in like uh, first grade. They're all on, on this like number line. So all of them can be placed somewhere here on this number line. I is not on that number line. I is what's called an imaginary number. So I is an imaginary number. And that's different from real number. Real numbers are on this number line, called the real number line. I is an imaginary number, which means it's not on that number line. It's not in between 0 and 2, or negative 2 and negative 5. Like, pi is between 3 and 4. The square root of 2, that's between 1 and 2. 125 over 126, that's between 0 and 1. I isn't like that at all. It's just imaginary. It's not on that number line. It's not on, on uh, that number line at all. So. It just is. Mathematicians just kind of made it up. You just have to work with it. And it just is. It just kind of... You'll get used to it. So what's a complex number then? Complex number. is a real number. Or it can be an imaginary number. An imaginary number isn't just i. It can be like 2i, it can be 3i, it can be negative i, it can be pi times i. So an imaginary number is a real number times i. So just keep that in mind. Or it can be a real number. Plus a complex number, I, or plus an imaginary number. So what, what would that look like? It would be like 3 plus 2i, 4 minus 2i, uh, 4 minus i, pi minus i, like that. So you're just adding the two together. You're just adding a real number and imaginary number, and you're putting it together to make a complex number. But you can also make like, just remember that like i, that's also complex. 
because i is 0 plus i. So the real part of this number is 0, and the imaginary part of this number is i. And 3, that's also complex, even though that's just a regular number, because 3 is 3 plus 0 i. So the imaginary part of this number is 0 i, and the real part of this number is 3. And if you have a complex number that has both a real and imaginary parts, then the real part is 3, and the complex part, I mean the imaginary part, is 2i. So, kind of a lot of words, like complex and imaginary, just try to keep them straight. I'll kind of just call this the real part, and this the imaginary part, and then just call the whole thing complex. Just kind of remember that. Complex, and then each complex number has real and imaginary part, and sometimes the parts can be zero. Like in three, or i. Okay. So now that I have that straight, what can we do with complex numbers? You can add them, you can subtract them, you can multiply them, you can divide them, and you can also take them to exponents, and you can square root them, and cube root them, and do all sorts of things like them. And da, da, da. And so they work just like real numbers, except they have a bunch of special rules. These special rules really come in when you have exponent square roots and cube roots. We're not going to deal with that. We're just going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide today. What are we going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide? We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide these numbers, because they're in this problem. Let's add those two numbers. You have 3 minus 2i, and you have 4 minus i, and you put a plus sign between them. Usually, you want to use parentheses around complex numbers, because if you remember PEMDAS, PEMDAS, addition and subtraction are on like the last of those operations. So, in order to group the complex number together, despite that it has a plus or minus sign in between them, you usually want to put a parentheses so it's all grouped together. However, since it's addition, it doesn't matter. So, we can just get rid of the parentheses for now. So, how do we add complex numbers? We look at the real part, which is 3, and 4. Those are the real numbers in this expression. So, put those together, 3 plus 4. And then you look at the imaginary numbers in this expression, like negative 2i and negative i. And you put those together. Negative 2i minus i. And then you work with them separately. So, what's 3 plus 4? That's 7. What's negative 2i minus i? Negative 2 minus... Well, negative 2 minus i is negative 2 minus 1i. So what's negative 2 minus 1? That's negative 3. And then you just put an i. So that's our answer. You just added your first complex number. And that, that's it. So you, all you do is add the i's together, and then you add the real numbers together. And then it will work out. So now let's try subtracting them. And now we need parentheses, because of a, we have subtraction sign instead of just an addition sign. So 3 minus 2i. Because there's nothing in front of those parentheses, we can get rid of those parentheses. But minus 4 minus i, you probably learned this in your algebra class when you've been adding and subtracting expressions with variables. But you need to distribute the minus sign. So what's the negative of 4? Minus 4. What's the negative of negative i? Those negatives cancel out. That's plus i. So now we just do the same thing. 3 minus 4 and minus 2i plus i. We group the real numbers together, and then we group the imaginary numbers together. Okay, so what's 3 minus 4? That's negative 1. What's negative 2i plus i? Negative 2i plus i is negative 2y plus 1i. What's negative 2 plus 1? That's negative 1i. Negative 1, and then we put an i. But negative 1i is just negative i, so we just put negative 1 minus i. And that's it. So don't know that. So now we just added and subtracted them. So how do we multiply them? Well, you do the same thing, in parentheses, and then we put a multiplication sign. So both of these, if you know what a binomial is, complex numbers are usually binomials, which means the one term, which is a real number, plus another term, which is the imaginary term. So when you multiply binomials, you have to do something called FOIL. Which is first, outer, inner, last. And if you don't know what that is, you have to Google that. Because I'm not going to explain this video. Hopefully, you've been taught that in your algebra classes. So you need to use FOIL in order to multiply complex numbers, because they're binomials. So what's first? The first in the complex number is 3, and in this complex number it's 4. So 3 times 4. And outer. So we have 3 on the outside, and you have negative i on the outside. 3 times negative i. And, let's see, inner. So you have negative 2 on the inside, and you have 4 on the inside. So that's, oh. Negative 2i times 4. 
and then last. In this complex number, what's last is negative 2i, and in this complex number, what's last is negative i. So negative 2i times negative i. What's 3 times 4? That's 12. What's 3 times negative i? Well, that's 3 times negative 1i. What's 3 times negative 1? That's negative 3. And then we just put an i. So that's how you multiply a real number by an imaginary number. What's negative 2i times 4? Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And then you just put an i. And in this way, you have to be careful. Because now, we have negative 2i times negative i. So multiplying an imaginary number by another imaginary number. I'll just put this over here. Negative 2i times negative 1i. What's negative 2 times negative 1? That's 2. And then we have 2i's. Times i. Times i. What's i times i? That's negative 1. What's 2 times negative 1? 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So, negative 2i times negative i is negative 2. Be very careful with that. Because sometimes, you'll... You can just like mess up, and then you'll do negative two times negative one. And that's two, and then you'll just put an i, and then you get two i. That's not right because you need to remember you have two i's here, so it's not negative two i squared, and it's not two i. It's negative two times i times i. I times i is negative one, and then you simplify that because two times negative one is negative two. So you have to simplify that. Out. Whenever you have like i squared or i times i, you need to remember that that's negative one, and that's it's not simplified if you just leave it as i squared. So now what do you do? Now we're just adding complex numbers again. So we take the real parts, which is twelve and negative two; those are the real numbers. And then we take the imaginary numbers, which is negative three i and negative eight i; those are the imaginary numbers. And then we just work with them separately. What's twelve minus two? It's ten. What's negative three i minus eight i? That's negative negative three i negative three times minus negative eight, negative three minus eight is negative eleven, and then you just put an i, and then and then we're done. So that's our answer for that problem because that problem told us to multiply that, multiply these numbers. So we just solved that first problem, which is a real math competition problem. So you just solved the first math competition problem on complex numbers. Okay, so that's ten minus eleven i. So now, here's the hard part. The hard part, at least for me, is dividing. So, for dividing, I'm going to put them in a fraction. Because that's easy for me, just to see. So, how do we divide? To divide, we need to make sure that we get i out of the denominator. Because simplified answers, and maybe you saw this in your algebra class, I'm not sure. Simplified answers have no i in the denominator. No i in the denominator. And the way this comes into regular algebra classes is that there's no square root in the denominator. So no i in the denominator and no square root. So you can't have like square root of 2? No, that cannot be in the denominator. Square root of 3? No, that can't be in the denominator. So square root of negative 1? No, that can't be in the denominator. No square roots in the denominator. No i in the denominator. So how do we get rid of i from this denominator? Well, maybe you'll say, just multiply by i, because i times i is negative 1, and then the i's will cancel out, and then there'll just be a real number. Let's try that. 4 minus i, in parentheses, times i. Well, that's, we distribute the i, so 4 times i is 4i, and then negative i times i. Ne i times i is negative 1, negative i times i is plus 1. That's 4i plus 1. But we still have an i there, so we never got rid of it. So how do we get rid of that i entirely? So that like the i's cancel out or something. What you do is called the conjugate. Conjugate. So let's say I have four minus i in the denominator, that becomes four plus i. What we do is we change the sign of the imaginary number. If you have like i minus four, that is not i plus four. That's not the conjugate. The conjugate is the sign change in the imaginary number. So if you have i, that becomes negative i. And the real part stays the same. So it's negative i minus 4. That's that's how this works. You always change the imaginary number, not the real number. So since we have 4 minus i, we need to multiply it by 4 plus i. So how do we do that? Without changing the value of this fraction. So first we multiply by 1. Nope. First we multiply by 1. And then we bring this over here. Okay. 
And then we multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate, because that's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1, and that includes complex numbers. So 4 plus i divided by 4 plus i, that's 1. So, that's good. So we're not changing the value of the fraction. So we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. So this is the denominator, and this is the numerator. You need to make sure to multiply both of them, because otherwise you're changing the value of the fraction, and you're not multiplying by 1, and that's not good. So remember to multiply both the numerator by 4 plus i, and the denominator by 4 plus i. So why do we multiply by the conjugate? Because we want to get rid of i. And multiplying by the conjugate will get rid of i. And you can see this if we use FOIL. Because how do we multiply complex numbers? We use FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. Okay, so it's 4 times 4. That's the first. Those are the first terms in each complex number. 4, and we have 4 here. Okay, so 4 times 4. And then outer. What's outside? 4, and then we have plus i. So that's plus 4 times i. Inside, we have negative i, and we have 4. So, negative i times 4. And then, in the last part we here, we have i plus i, and then we have minus i. So, we do minus i times i. Okay. So, now we just do all of these. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus 4, 4 times i is plus 4i. Minus i times 4 is minus 4i. And minus i times i is minus negative 1. Minus negative 1 is always plus 1. So as you can see, the i's cancel out. We got rid of them. Because 4i minus 4i is 0. And if you add 0 to anything, they go away. So now we're just left with 16 plus 1, which is 17. So in the denominator of our fraction, that becomes 17. So remember that. Multiplying by conjugates means you get a real number. And that will always be true for any complex number. And it's, yeah, and it just works out. So you get a little of i from the denominator. So now what do we do? We need to do this multiplication in the numerator. So we multiply these two complex numbers. And we use FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. So what's first? 3, and then we have 4. So what's 3 times 4? We'll, we'll leave that there for now. We'll do it later. And then in the outside, we have 3, and then we have plus i. So that's plus 3 times i. In the inside, we have negative 2i and 4. So negative 2i times 4. And then on the last part here, we have negative 2i. And then we have plus i. So what's that? That's negative 2i times i. Okay. So what's 3 times 4? That's 12. What's 3 times i? That's plus 3i. What's negative 2i times 4? That's negative 8i. What's negative 2i times i? Well, here we have i times i. i times i is negative 1. So we write the negative 2. Write down that, and then write down negative 1, because we have i times i. What's negative 2 times negative 1? That's plus 2. Plus 2. Okay. So now, we do the same thing. We add the real parts, and then we add the imaginary parts. So, 12 plus 2 plus 3i minus 8i. And then what's 12 plus 2? That's 14. What's 3i minus 8i? 3 minus 8 is negative 5. i. So that's the numerator. 14 minus 5i. So that's the numerator. And then if we just move this around a little, so it's more centered. That's our answer. That is the answer to the division problem. So that's the answer to the division problem here. 14 minus 5i, all over 17. And then you, you just add, divided your first complex number. And th that's a bit harder, because you need to do two multiplications in order to divide one, two, two complex numbers, you need to multiply two pairs of complex numbers. Because we need to multiply in the numerator here, and you need to multiply in the denominator here. So that's a bit complicated, but that's how you divide complex numbers. It's always just going to be complicated like that, unfortunately. And I just want to show you one last way to rewrite the solution. You can distribute the denominator over the minus sign, or the plus sign, which means you do this. 14 over 17, because that's the that's the real part of the n complex number, the numerator, and that's the denominator. And then you bring the minus sign out here, and then the real part of the imagin the coefficient of the imaginary number is negative 5, but we have that minus sign here, so we just write 5. And then in the denominator, 
you have 17, and then you bring the i out here. So what I just did there is that I wrote the complex number in a different way. And that means that the real part is 14 17 and the imaginary part 14 17 and the imaginary part is negative 5 negative 5 over 17 times i. So what this did is that it allowed us to see the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. So that's sometimes helpful. And maybe it's not helpful in this math competition, I don't know. But I just want you to know that you can distribute the denominator over a plus sign, over the minus sign, when you have a complex number over a real number. Because this, that's simplified. But this is also simplified. But what this doesn't allow you to see is what what is the real part. Well, you don't know, because it's over 17, so you can't really see what the real part is. But here, the real part and the imaginary part are completely separate. So you can clearly see that the real part is plus 14 17 So sometimes, that will help you. Because you'll need to know what the real part and what the imaginary part of complex numbers are. So if you see a complex number over a fraction, and you need to know the different parts of it, just remember to divide out the denominator before trying to find the real and imaginary part. Sometimes you'll get questions like that, like on tests and stuff. Uh, maybe not so much, but sometimes it'll be helpful. So hopefully, that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully, you followed all of that. If you didn't, try going to other resources, try Googling stuff, like Googling complex numbers, or try just re watching the video or just try thinking it out yourself. I just hope that this really helped. And there are other harder complex number problems, but hopefully that will get you through all of the number ones on this list. Because all of the number ones are just like like this. This is multiple this is first you have to add it and two complex numbers. And then you need to multiply them. So that's what just what what we did. And then here you need to multiply two pairs of complex numbers and then subtract the results. And then here you need to multiply a complex number by itself, and then you need to multiply another complex number by itself, and you need to multiply those results together. And then here you need to multiply three complex numbers together. And oh, just here, I want to point this out. Two plus three i in parentheses. One minus three i. And you have 2 minus 3i. So here, 2 minus 3i. And here, 2 plus 3i. What do you notice about that? They're both the same, except they have different signs in the uh, imaginary part. They're conjugates. So whenever you multiply conjugates, you're going to get a real number. So multiply those. If you're doing that problem in the math competition, multiply those numbers first. Multiply 2 plus 3i times 2 minus 3i first. Always try to multiply conjugates first. Because if you multiply these two numbers, and I'm just going to do this the quick way, and do it in my head, it's 13. So that's a real number. So now you know that this whole problem is 13 one, times 1 minus 3i. And now it's really easy, because it's just a real number times a complex number. So, distribute the 13. What's 13 times 1? 13. What's 13 mi times minus 3i? At negative 39i. So that's your answer for that problem. So we just did another complex number problem. And the way we did that is by switching the order of the multiplications we do. So if you see conjugates, always multiply conjugates first. And that's the last point I want to point out to you before I let you do all of the rest of the problems here. And so I hope this really helps, especially with complex numbers. It may be in some math competitions. I'll do another video doing more complicated complex number problems later. And have funding math!